nothing like proving a mathematical theorem. It is, and you know, sometimes when you solve a pu puzzle, you have kind of that, a little touch of that feeling. David Hilbert gave a list of problems that he felt would be important to be solved in the next century. David Hilbert, a German mathematician of the 19th and early 20th centuries, contributed to the development of mathematics in various fields, including geometry and invariant theory. His research of integrals provided a foundation for functional analysis, which deals with functions of functions, such as differentiation and integration. Hilbert's life events exhibit his clear inclination toward mathematics. For example, when he was a boy, Hilbert transferred to a more science-orientated gymnasium, the German equivalent to an American preparatory school, after a period of unhappiness. Later, in college, he befriended fellow mathematicians Hermann Minkowski and Adolf Hurwitz. Upon obtaining his PhD, Hilbert became a senior lecturer at his alma mater, but later moved to a different university as professor of mathematics. Many of Hilbert's students went on to become famous mathematicians as well. David Hilbert's contributions to mathematics are invaluable. He conceived the idea of Hilbert space, which essentially generalizes Euclidean space into a finite vector that allows for calculus to be used. He also saw Gordon's problem using his knowledge of invariant functions, or functions that remain unchanged even when transformations are applied. Example of Gratia, the distance between two points is invariant, or unchanged, when adding a constant to both points. He developed axioms for geometry, or assumptions that serve as a groundwork for Euclidean geometry. For example, for two points, there always exists a line connecting the two points. In 1910, he was the second person to receive the Bullyai Prize, an international prize awarded every five years to mathematicians who publish monographs describing their own accomplishments. In 1900, Hilbert published 23 unsolved mathematical problems, several of which greatly influenced mathematics of the 1900s. Many of these problems have been solved over the past century, but some have even been declared unresolvable with modern mathematics. Others are awarded too vaguely to declare complete resolution. The eighth problem, which consists of the Riemann hypothesis and the Golpe conjecture, is among the unsolved problems. In 2000, German historian Rudiger Thiel discovered a 24th problem that Hilbert never published. Contrary to many of the other problems that Hilbert proposed, this problem belongs to the realm of foundations of mathematics. Theo provides a concise translation of this mysterious question. The 24th problem in my Paris lecture was to be, criteria of simplicity, or proof of the greatest simplicity of certain proofs. Develop a theory of the method of proof in mathematics in general. Under a given set of conditions there can be but one simplest proof. Quite generally, if there are two proofs for a theorem, you must keep going until you have derived each from the other, or until it becomes quite evident what variant conditions, and aids, have been used in the two proofs. Given two routes, it is not right to take either of these two or to look for a third. It is necessary to investigate the area lying between the two routes. Hilbert's 24th problem raises questions about mathematics both on a specific and general level. The basis for this problem is the assumption that every problem has the simplest proof. Under the circumstances that this assertion is true, Hilbert calls for a theory to prove the validity of this statement. Because this question lacks a direct answer, broader speculation in this field of mathematics has been raised. Many have claimed this assertion regarding a simplest proof to be, in fact, a development of a theory of the method of proof in mathematics in general. An important aspect of the question that Hilbert emphasized was the criteria used to consider the simplicity of a problem. Thiel speculated the legitimacy in claiming that certain proofs were simpler than others. On the other hand, Hilbert made this assumption to help create the foundations for his 24th problem. Proof simplicity has often been defined by the number of members in an axiom system, the total number of symbols, the maximum number of distinct variables, and independence. Consequently, these variables of the proof the maximum number of distinct variables and independence. Consequently, these aspects of the proof boil down to two things, proof length and variable richness. The shorter the proof, the simpler it is. Likewise, the less variables used in a deduced step, the simpler it is. As a result, these two factors have been the main focus in determining a solution to the problem of simplicity. An important aspect of the question that Hilbert emphasized was the criteria used to consider the simplicity of a problem. Thiel speculated the legitimacy in claiming that certain proofs were simpler than others. On the other hand, Hilbert made this assumption to help create the foundation for his 24th problem. Proof simplicity has often been defined by the number of members in an axiom system, the total number of symbols, the maximum number of distinct variables, and independence. Clearly, 
with the vast potential the problem solution could bring to the mathematical community, specialists around the world were intrigued. One individual in particular, however, Kurt Gödel, denounced the possibility of unifying mathematical proofs under such a grandiose theory. In 1931, this Austrian-US mathematician proved some of Hilbert's principal goals and premises to be unattainable and invalid. Thus, Gödel had concluded that Hilbert's 24th problem is unsolvable, for it cannot be known with certainty that some mathematical axioms do not contradict and cannot be reduced to a single proof. However, other than Gödel, no other mathematician puts forward any serious attempts at resolving the problem. Soon, Hilbert's 24th problem was buried and forgotten under the countless other burdens of the 20th century, leaving it only to be rediscovered in 2000. Now, the century-old sleeping beauty has been awoken, paving way for modern-day mathematicians to resolve it as its prince charming.